Advent is a time of preparation. Advent is a time of waiting, of expectation. Advent is a time of hope, joy, peace, and love. These are the gifts of Christmas, the gift that God gives to us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the Christian season of Advent, we prepare for the Advent or coming of Christ at Christmas. Today, we continue to celebrate the season by lighting our Advent candles as we move towards Christmas and the birth of Jesus. As we light the candles live here in our worship, uh, we hope and encourage you to light those candles of your Advent wreath at home. Today, we relight the candle of hope, and we remind ourselves that Jesus is the hope of the world. We relight the candle of peace and remind ourselves that he is our Prince of Peace. We relight the candle of joy and remind ourselves that the angels called us to exceedingly great joy. And today we light the fourth candle in our Advent wreath, the candle of love. And as we do, we remember, we remember that Jesus alone is the ultimate source of our hope and love. We remember that God's promise to us was that he would send us a Messiah, that out of his love for us and for the whole world, he would send his only begotten son so that whoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We remind ourselves in this Advent season for a time of kindness towards others, a time of thinking about others, a time of sharing with others, a time of expressing the love that God has for us with others as we meet. As we celebrate during this Advent season this gift of love, let us pray. Oh God, we celebrate the coming of your son Jesus during the season of Advent. We remember your love revealed through your humble servants like Mary and Joseph and demonstrated through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. As we light these Advent candles and remind ourselves of so much, of his birth, of his anticipated return, we ask that you would teach us how to love, that we may grow in your love. May our hearts be filled with your love, a love for each other, a love for you, a love for the church, a love for the world. And may we demonstrate your love in such a way that others may come to see just how great your love for all of us really is. We pray this today, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our source of love. Amen. Come thou wisdom from on high And order all things far and nigh To us the path of knowledge show And cause us in her ways to go Rejoice Come to thee, O Israel. Hello, church. Welcome to worship for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Won't you sing with me? O come, all ye faithful. Let us adore him. Oh, come, let us. 
choirs of angels sing in exaltation. Oh, sing all ye bright hosts of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning, Jesus, to Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Oh, come, let us adore him. We do so most clearly when we go to our God in a time of prayer. And we adore him for the ways he listens to us and the ways he hears our cries and the ways he responds. We give you opportunity to share your joys and your concerns. Uh, uh, We want to know the ways in which you've seen God at work in the world around you and the ways in which you would call upon God to be present in your life or in the life of someone for whom you're praying. Uh, We uh, invite you to do that a couple of ways. Uh, You can comment on Facebook if you are uh, worshiping with us through our Facebook Live. Uh, If you are are there or anywhere else or at any time, you can text or call 615-379-7332. And at any time, we have a button on our website for prayer concerns. Uh, We would love to hear the things you're praying for so that we can pray for one another. Let us go to our God in a time of prayer. Let's pray. Oh God, Christmas is upon us. It's just days away now. Uh, We'll spend the final days uh, making final preparations for what may be a different Christmas, but is Christmas all the same. We pray today that amid all that we would uh, put around it, the the decorations and the gifts, the the meals, the cleaning, the, the carols, that we might also make our preparations for the coming of the light of the world. We pray today, O God, that we might see more in this Christmas than gifts under a tree, more in this Christmas than lights on that tree have to offer. We are thankful today, O God, for the love in our lives, for the opportunity to celebrate the most incredible gift of love ever given. We are thankful today, O God, that that love came to us in a remarkable way, in the person of a baby born in a manger as a gift of God. Help us to find that remarkable gift of love in the gift of every baby, of every child, of of every life that is precious to you, in the love of family and friends. In the kind words of a stranger, help us to find glimpses of your great love in the small acts of love that we offer to one another. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and love. We have spent the last month trying to focus our hearts on the coming of your presence on that holy night the light in the darkness of our world, hope of new life, peace of understanding, joy that fills our hearts, and love that flows from every ounce of your being as our God. Help us to open ourselves up to all the gifts that you offer to us today, O God. Help us 
as we give gifts to one another to be reminded that we do so in a way to show your love to others. Loving God, we celebrate not only the the miracle of the Christ child being born in a manger so many years ago, but also the miracle that at every Christmas the world is changed, even for just a bit. And people who may not think about faith of the year sing a little louder. Their hearts are a little fuller. Kindness seems a little more ready. Generosity is more of a way of life. Help us to learn this Christmas to make your ways our ways all the time. Help us to be people of hope, people of peace, people of joy, people of love. Lord, we pray that we might have a holy Christmas, that we might be amazed again at the coming of the Christ child in a manger. We pray that we might have a blessed Christmas, that we might be amazed again that that coming is your presence in the world for us as one of us. And we pray for people everywhere who need a a little Christmas in their life at all times. For those who are hurting or alone, for those who are sick and struggling, for families and homes, for communities, states and nations and worlds. God, we pray that your peace might pass all understanding and come to us. We hope for so much for our world and you. Be our source of joy. Help us to love as only you can love. That being loved by you, your love may spill out of us at every turn. This Sunday of Advent, this Sunday before Christmas, remind us as we get closer and closer that you are always coming to us. Help us to feel your presence. Help us to know that presence. And help us to be your presence to someone else. In the name of Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Desert 
We are here in the fourth week of Advent where we've been looking together at the gifts of Christmas, the gifts of of hope and peace and joy and love. Today I want to start just a a little bit different. I want to ask a question. What what would Christmas be without the songs or the the carols? Uh, Maybe a a little saner, some of you might say, but but there's something about hearing them, whether it's uh, uh, singing uh, as we're walking around the house, uh, singing at church, or or just singing along with the radio. There's something about the songs of Christmas that just seem to kind of change the way you feel. I I wonder what uh, Christmas would be without some of these songs. Uh, So today I want to start with a little bit of the game. I want to read a phrase from a a well-known holiday song, uh, and I want you to try to think of the song title. So here we go. Let's, let's try this together. Uh, we're snuggled up together like two birds of a feather would be. Sleigh ride. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I hate going out in the storm. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. Let's let it snow. Uh, decorations of red on a green Christmas tree won't be the same, dear, if you're not here with me. How about a little blue Christmas for that one? Or the... the The request for please have snow and mistletoe and presents under the tree. I'll be home for Christmas. Another one about mistletoe where it says uh, uh, mistletoe hung where you can see every couple tries to stop. That's rocking around the Christmas tree. Or or how about this one? In the meadow we can build a snowman and pretend that he is Parson Brown. He'll say, are you married? We'll say, no, man, but you can do the job when you're in town. That's uh, winter wonderland. Now, if you, if you didn't get any of those, here's one uh, for the rest of us. Uh, hint, the song title here is the same as the lyric. Ready? All I want for Christmas is you. You got that one, didn't you? But did you notice a theme with, with all of these kind of Christmas songs, the, the ones that are so popular? 
You know, Valentine's Day may get all the glory for being the holiday of love, but, but it's pretty, pretty clear that Christmas holds a corner on the market as a season of love and romance. In fact, uh, several years ago, uh, an American wedding study was done by Bride Magazine that found that 19% of all engagements take place in December, making it the most popular month to get engaged. And you can guess what day is most popular of all. Uh, Statistics show that Christmas Eve is that day. More people get engaged on Christmas Eve than on Valentine's Day. Uh, Data released by Facebook a little while back, you know they're listening anyway, right? Uh, Said that Christmas Eve was the most popular day to get engaged, followed by Christmas Day, New Year's Day, and then Valentine's Day. Now, there's certainly not, nothing wrong with celebrating love during this season. If you get engaged on Christmas Eve, I'll wholeheartedly celebrate with you. But, but depending on where you find yourself in regard to romantic relationships at the moment, all this love in the air can bring happiness and expectation or loneliness and, and isolation. Either way, too much focus on cuddling in the cold and meeting under the mistletoe can can blind us to the real love story of Christmas. So I challenge all of us not not to miss the true story of love this season. This is the the love story that has been written for all of us, the the story of true, faithful, unending, sacrificial kind of love, God's love for us and sending us Jesus, the, the one love that changes everything. Love has been a a part of God's story from the very beginning. From the moment of creation, God's love was a part of the fabric of our world. God's love was with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, both before and after sin entered the world. God loved uh, Noah and his family by uh, shutting them up in the ark and saving them for a new start. In the Old Testament, God gave the commandments and the law in love as a way to help his people atone for their sin and stay connected to him. All this love is throughout the story of scriptures. And this love turned the whole world upside down when God sent his son to live among us, the God of the universe to be born in a manger, to die on a cross and to rise from the grave. It took that kind of love to to disrupt and, and, and overturn the power of death and and evil. Uh, The story is not about a a feeling, though. It's a story of God's love in action. How how the the God of the universe loves you so much that he left everything in order to be with you, to sacrifice his life so that you could be with him. This, This love is the fourth gift of Christmas that we're unwrapping during this Advent season. If you've joined us over the the season, we've unwrapped together the gifts of hope and peace and joy, and now we unwrap this gift of love. All all along, we've said that the word Advent means uh, coming or arrival, that this is a season of expectation and waiting and anticipation and longing, that it's not just uh, uh, an extension of Christmas, but it's a very important season when God gives us opportunity to, to prepare our hearts and minds for his coming, to to link us past, present, and future with all that God seeks to give to us. Advent offers us the the opportunity to to share in the ancient longing for the coming of the Messiah, to celebrate his birth, and and to be alert for his second coming. During Advent, we have lit the candles on our wreath and, and reminded ourselves of all that God wants to give to us as he comes Uh, as a light in a world lost in darkness. As we celebrate with the Advent wreath uh, this season uh, and light these candles, uh, each flame has brought us closer and closer to the true light of the world being born in Bethlehem. Today, we lit the candle of love. Advent is a season for rediscovering the coming of our Savior and for gaining an even greater understanding of how wide, how long, how high, how deep God's love for us really is. And so that is the gift that we are unwrapping today. 
There, there's nothing quite like a Christmas morning when there's children in the house and, and they, they come down the stairs and they find the presents under the tree and they start to unwrap all those gifts at Christmas. The, the excitement of, of ripping the paper off as quickly as possible, opening up the box and, and actually playing with whatever gift or, or toy is inside. The worst thing in the world is, is to have a gift without batteries or, or one that requires an adult to set it up before they can start playing with it. Kids just want to unwrap it and, and jump right in. That's what we're going to do today with this gift of love, just kind of jump right in. So, so what do we do with the gift of love? Well, the first thing I, I, I think we do is we accept love. Now, I'm going to guess that if I just say the reference, John 3.16, many of us will have that familiar verse just kind of run through our head automatically. Just in case, uh, uh, one version of it goes like this. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. You see, the problem is sometimes we're, we're so familiar with that verse that we can recite it and look right past it. But God's love in sending Jesus is the one love that changes everything. But we know that verse so well that we can overlook it. And if we're not careful, uh, we can miss it altogether. But this was and is the ultimate gift, an act of sacrificial, holy, complete, infinite love. The message of this verse is the core of what we believe as those people who follow Jesus. So it makes sense that as we unwrap the gift of love today that we should start here at the center. God loved the world. He gave his son. When we accept that gift and believe in him, we are given his life, salvation, and, and eternal life. So the first thing we do with the gift of God's love is so basic, it's, it's easy to overlook. We, we must accept the gift. Notice I said basic and, and not easy. Uh, for some of you, the, the, the step of accepting the gift of God's love and, and believing in Jesus may be very difficult. It may be something you've struggled with for a, a long time. It may be a, a brand new idea for you, or it may be a gift that you've neglected for a while. Maybe even in this time of year, and especially this time of year, you feel a little bit unlovable. Maybe you've been burned by human love too many times to trust that there's some greater kind of love. Maybe you think, you don't know what I've done. You don't know the dark secrets and doubts and fears and the pain that I have deep inside of me. Well, maybe I don't, but God does. And the love he offers us sees and knows and, and understands any of that. The love that God offers to us is Jesus Christ. No matter what challenges or hurts you hold on to, God's love can handle it and deal with any of them and heal any of them. Wherever you are on your journey, it's okay. God knows. God understands. And his response is to open his arms in perfect love. So wherever you are, I encourage you to accept the gift of God's love today. Let this season of Advent, these days before Christmas, be one of accepting the love that God offers to you in the gift of his Son. Uh, the next thing we must do after we've accepted this love is, is learn to just experience that love. It's easy to be distracted by all the things that need to get done and, and have to get done and we think are so important right now. It's easy to get distracted by things that are not happening this year that we would usually be doing right now. It's easy to read the headlines and wonder if love can really overcome the darkness and hurt and hatred in our world. It's easy to allow worry over tomorrow or next week or, or next year to overwhelm us and keep us from really feeling love. But you know what? God loves us. All these things matter to God. God does not ask you to ignore those things in order to experience his love. You don't have to, to get rid of your, your hurt or your worry or your hurry. God loves you in the midst of all of that. He invites you to bring any of it, all of it, with you to him. To surrender your deepest hurts and concerns of your life and allow him to fill and renew you with his unending love. And the good news is that that love he gives you through his son, Jesus Christ, 
is more than enough for anything that concerns you today. The apostle Paul described that love we can experience this way. He said, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor neither fears for today or worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's a powerful love. The most powerful love. It's a love that can be can't be contained or, or, or constrained or, or held back by any power in the universe, no ev- not evil or death, no person, no power. It's a love that is to be experienced. If we want to get back to our example of a kid on Christmas Day, this is not a gift to accept and unwrap and then kind of put on a shelf. It's more like a, a new favorite stuffed animal to to, to unwrap and embrace and carry and hold on to and love and, until its, its ears wear off. Or, or a, a complete set of brand new clothes to put on and live in. And that, now these examples don't begin to, to do God's love justice, but, but I hope you get the idea. God's love is the, the center of all that is. It's the oxygen and the lifeblood that courses through our, our, our body, continually giving us life. I pray that this season is one where, where we can embrace God's love fully and, and that you can experience his love in a, a new and, and a deep way as you open your hearts and hands and minds and lives to him. And once you've accepted that love that God offers to you in Jesus Christ and experienced that love that he gives to you as he gives you Jesus, how can you help but to share that love? To just share that love. It's when we have uh, this experience that it just starts to overflow out of us. It's why we have centuries worth of poetry and novels and plays and love songs about love. When we are in love, it shows. We can't help it. It just kind of bubbles out of us. It overflows. The gift of God's love is the same way. It's for sharing. And in fact, sharing this gift doesn't leave us with less. It, It leaves us with more. Once we accept and experience the love of God, the the next step is to share it, to let it come out of you. John addressed this process in 1 John 4, 9 through 11. He says this, God showed how much he loved us by sending us his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, he says, since God loved us so much, we surely ought to love each other. God's love comes to us, and then it flows through us. The the more we embrace and experience it, the more we can share it with others. wonder what that looks like for you this season. I read an article this week by a man named John Ferguson who, who talked about how to bless during a pandemic. He suggests the following ways that form an acrostic that spell the word bless. For B, he said, you begin with prayer. If you're not already, it's a great time to to just pray for your neighbors and your family and your friends, uh, for anyone that you meet, for for just someone that you pass by through driving down the road. It's a great time to just pray for one another. The L is for listen. One of the greatest gifts that you can give to anyone is simply a listening ear. As long as you keep your distance six feet apart, you can still talk to people when you're out and about. If you aren't comfortable leaving your home or if you're at a high-risk individual, make a phone call. Just call somebody up and, and not just tell them what's going on in your life, but listen to what's going on in theirs. The E for bless is eat. Even in a global pandemic, uh, uh, most of us still eat at least three meals a day. And if you're like me, a few snacks in between, right? Offer to provide a meal to someone else. Or better yet, don't ask. Just buy them a special treat at the grocery store and drop it off one day on their porch. Eat with someone. Eat uh, the same meal as someone else so that they can know that you are sharing it even though you may not be in the same place as they are. For the S, for serve. Uh, Now, social distancing means we have to get creative with how we serve other people. Uh, But you can still uh, write a thank you note. 
to, uh, to someone who uh, waits on you at a, a grocery store, uh, a first responder. Uh, buy a few extra rolls of toilet paper or some disinfectant wipes when you can find them on the grocery store shelves and, and share them with a neighbor. Uh, rake your neighbor's leaves or, or if we ever get the, the snow of the season, shovel the driveway a little bit. Help out. Call someone who may be lonely or, or buy groceries for someone who can't leave the house. If you're praying for your neighbors and listening to what they're saying, chances are you're going to discover some meaningful ways to su- serve and love them. The, the, S, the second S is, is story. You know, in this time of crisis, we have many more opportunities to, to tell our story of how we found our way to God and the difference His love makes in our life. Look for opportunities to just share your story. Find ways to, to bless someone. Ferguson says that just like Jesus, we can bless our neighbors under any and all circumstances. Even in a pandemic, the mission of Jesus is simply unstoppable. When every one of his followers recognizes the opportunities around them and the responsibilities before them to help other people experience the love of Jesus. There are endless ways to allow God's love to overflow through you as you love others, as he has loved you. Think of a way right now that you can share God's love this week. And then keep your heart and your eyes open to the world around you as Christmas approaches. Let's keep our our focus on making this a season of love that reaches far deeper than sappy carols or romantic statistics or or those Hallmark movies that are so popular right now. Let's revel in God's love and be known to others by the way his love flows out of us. May this be a season of accepting, experiencing, and sharing God's love, God's gift of love. And may it be a new and exciting thing in your life this Advent and Christmas season. Receive the gifts that Jesus offers to you this Christmas. Hope, peace, joy, love. These are the gifts of Christmas. Amen. Won't you sing with me once again in the bleak midwinter? In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago, our God heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Angels and archangels may have gathered there, cherubim and seraphim thronged the air, but his mother only in her Worshipped the beloved with a kiss. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a 
shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. Blessed is the name of the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He alone is your blessing. He alone is worthy of receiving your blessing. He alone blesses you. Blessed is the one who watches and waits for the Son sent from the Father, followed by the Holy Spirit. He alone is your light. He alone is your salvation. Be blessed as you wait for the night of his arrival. Blessed is he who loves you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May God bless you with this love the love that he has given to you, may you give to others. To be love as he is love. To know love as he does. Blessed is the one who blesses you. Blessed is the one who waits. Blessed is the one who loves. May you be counted as a blessing. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.